JoJo shiz. What is going on, my fellow talks? MJ20K March Marcus, whatever you want to call me to back in the video. Your boy just got done off work. So I figured we watched some Super Eye Patch Wolf. Um I always wanted to watch a Super Eye Patch Wolf video, but I just never really got around doing it. JoJo, I want JoJo Part 4. Yeah, I'm gonna break one. I just started that one. Now, uh, apparently, I heard Golden Wind. Part five was probably one of, my, one of the more weaker ones out of the uh, five. Part five was probably one of the more weaker seasons. Diamond Unbreakable. I'm loving Diamond Unbreakable so far. But, um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, here we go, guys. Um, yeah, this is from the Super Patch Wolf. I've always wanted to, like, kind of dive into this video just because he's, I feel like he actually goes in depth with his anime videos. And that's, that's something I, like, I really enjoy. And I, I always want to check out some of his videos. Um... You know, we watched Nux, we watched, uh, Goo Gook, 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 however you pronounce my man's name. I never checked that Super Eye Patch Wolf video, and I, I never really kind of, like, discussed about it, so. Anyway, guys, um, we'll get into it. Um, why you should watch Jojo Bizarre, Jojo Bizarre Adventures Part 5. I love Jojo. Jojo is one of my favorite anime of all time. I freaking love it. It's really great anime. If you guys have never checked it out, definitely amazing stuff. But give me one, before we get started, give me one second. Alright guys, we are back, so without further ado, let's get started with the video, shall we? Let's see, Super Fast Wolf is going to give us the breakdown why you should be watching part 5. Let's do it, baby. I said it before, and I'll say it again. If you ever do a video for part 5, I will achieve heaven. Who else is here to wait for why you should watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5 Golden Wind? Why you should watch <laughs> JoJo's Part 5? Waiting for the why you should watch JoJo's Part 5. Where the Where heck is, it? is, the, is the Part 5 video? Maybe you should do your job as an anime. Who waiting for why you should watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5 video? Or wrestling. Oh, like frankly, is it because anyone like cares it? about those? Dang, so this right is really hot topic. A month later, no. here we go. Okay, fine. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure started off life as a story about a strapping young lad and his quest to defeat his evil vampire brother through the use of magical sunshine curve. But it was me, It was a fun, <laughs> weird power fantasy brimming with the eccentricities of its author, Hirohiko Araki, Can't tell me JoJo's coupled with the man's five, genuine great. earnestness for heartfelt storytelling. And since then has evolved over multiple successive parts, all of yes, which I have already done a video on. Yeah. And if you are starting on this really one with too. no knowledge of JoJo, Sure, you do you, buddy. But what's been so interesting yes, about making this series is watching Araki's approach to yeah. storytelling change with each successive part. So much so that by part five, Golden Winds, things have changed a lot. Part five is unusual in a lot of ways. While the story of the majority of the first six JoJo parts all directly feed into the part that follows, part five is far more isolated, with the events of the story existing as a kind of splinter arc from part yeah, three. Yeah, I'm saying, like, part five was probably more, like... the events of part four and having little, if four, any, like, repercussions part, on the story of part like, six. But part five I mean, is like also part one of my personal that, like, favorites. Like, was it interests like, the most like, compelling the characters, battles, and themes of the entire series thus far. And to explain why that is, we are of course going to start with our brand new Jojo, Journo Giovanna. Journo is a kind Journo. of black sheep of the Joestar family. Simultaneously, both the son of Jonathan Joestar and mortal enemy Dio Brando, it's weird. The most defining character trait of Journo is how he's like a combination of these two opposing characters. Like Jonathan, he's capable of incredible kindness and empathy. An empathy that's manifested itself Journo in his was, power to like, imbue life to inanimate objects. I and heard, also, yeah, I, like I Jonathan, a, is a Journal firm believer like in justice and too. good, causing him to set out on his quest to become a gang star and rid the streets of Italy of its insidious drug trade. But that gentle kindness is also streaked with something much darker. In the face of those he considers evil, that kind empathy will give way to a frigid malice. Unlike previous protagonists, Jerno has no desire to understand or befriend his opponents, nor any reservation about killing his enemy with a sadistic brutality. And yeah, it's in these brutal, moments bro. that Jerno's really calm, just righteous just demeanor subsides and we see the traces of crazy. Dio that float beneath. It's that duality combined with his calm Nani? 
calm, reserved okay, nature that makes you an unusual member of the Joestar family. And making him even more unusual is his design. While a previous JoJo's protagonist were walking, his design, talking, just like brick like shit houses, like Journal's Star features are soft and his slender. Is like, he has these uh, uh, delicate pops uh, of curled hair, like, and, and from his too. effeminate pink clothing to his fragile looking stand, everything about his appearance goes his against that of his hyper-masculine and power-driven predecessors. Even Journal's place within his own story seems less significant, with him often taking a backseat to the supporting characters, and you can especially see this in the fights of part 5, with other characters even commenting on Gold Experience's lack of direct physical strength. Instead, Jerno tends to take up more supportive roles in battle either augmenting the abilities of his allies, taking action that will increase their morale, or healing their wounds. Although, technically, he's not actually healing them, he's taking objects he finds lying around, turning them into replacement organs, and stuffing them inside his friends. Part 5's <laughs> really weird. And to show you what I mean here, let's take a little look at the number of battles each Jojo wins in their respective parts. But first, to keep things tidy, here's some qualifiers. One, fights have to be actual fights with momentum swinging back and forth, as opposed to a straight up beating. So Jonathan stomping a bunch of thugs in an alley does not count. Two, I'm only counting fights without significant involvement from any ally of the protagonist. And three, the victory must be decisive with zero ambiguity, i.e. one party must be incapacitated by its end. And if we take those factors into account, it looks like this. Jonathan wins 7 fights, Joseph wins 5, Jotaro wins 11, Josuke wins 6, and do you know how many Jerno wins? Won a single fight against the automatic statue Damn, he baby face one in fight? episode 22. That's you crazy. could stretch it to two if you want to count Luca in that, but that guy's special ability is that he owns a shovel and he is more a speed bump than an actual opponent. And oh, so what's interesting like about this like is like you can okay. see a distinct That's shift crazy. in Didn't how Araki battles his protagonists. Jotaro was the center of his own universe, the ultra powerful, invincible badass who is the solution to everyone's problems. But that approach softened significantly in part 4 with the comparatively less powerful Josuke and its increased focus on its supporting cast. Yeah, wasn't with that really concept that being taken to a logical powerful. extreme in part 5, Juno is not the center of the universe in this story and is far from the invincible badass that Chitaro was. And because of all these factors, I think Juno lacks some of the immediate appeal of his predecessors. In fact, in a poll I put up on Twitter, out of nearly 11,000 votes, Jerno was voted the least popular Jojo out of parts 2 to 5, with only 13% of the votes. Despite part 5 being voted the second most popular part in a previous poll. Now granted, 11,000 people is a relatively small sample size compared to the Jojo fanbase as a whole, and the only people who voted would have been the kind of person who followed me on Twitter, meaning they were all cool and beautiful, but it did give some weight to something I've experienced only anecdotally up until this point, and that is that people tend to be more dismissive towards Jerno as a main character than they do the other Jojos, and on the surface, I get it. He's not as entertaining as Joseph, as badass as Jotaro, right. or as fun. But I also think looking at Journal like this kind of misses the point of his character and in a larger sense, part 5 in general. Journal is not written to exist in isolation, but as part of a larger whole. And by giving him a calmer, more subtle nature, reducing both his power and his importance within the story, what it does is allows the supporting cast to step forward and take up those roles. And that's important, because part 5 isn't a narrative about any one singular character, but a story of relationships. Think about this. The cast of Part 3 were all tied together by their mutual goal of destroying Dio. The cast of Part 4 by their proximity of living in the town of Morio. And so, the question is what is it that ties the cast of Part 5 together? And to begin to answer that, let's take a little trip into Journal's past. Estranged from his father Dio, Journal's mother was forced to raise him by herself, but unwilling to give up her youth, she often abandoned Journal for long stretches of time, mm, leaving the little okay. boy alone, isolated, and uncared for, and would eventually yeah, even rough. bring a violent stepfather into their home, trapping Journal in a childhood of loneliness, isolation, and 
abuse oh, until one fateful day when a chance encounter with a member of an organized crime syndicate results in the mysterious man becoming Journo's watchful guardian angel, whose unspoken care would pull Journo from his isolated existence, giving him the strength to grow and become a stronger, better person. This story is not unique to Journo, but a thread that runs through the lives of each of the supporting cast. Mista, Abaccio, Narancia, and Fugo are all characters who have in some way been abandoned and betrayed by the world around them. From Fugo suffering sexual abuse at the hands of his college professor, to Abaccio being forced out of the police force in disgrace, to Mista's unjust imprisonment over a false self-defense charge. Each one of these characters having at one time lost their place in the world and started on a path that would lead to their ruin. Well, Until, okay, just like Journo, the kindness of another person pulled them from that path and saved them from that ruin. But unlike Journo, this time that person would be Bruno Bucciarati. Ah, who he would rather live with, he chose to stay with his father, so not because he preferred him, but because he, he knew the man would be unable to cope at the loss of his wife and son, while his mother would likely go on to remarry and have another family. Mother, no and problem. this is the kind of person that Bucciarati is, filled with empathy and compassion for those around him, and particularly those that have been cast off by society. And this is what brings him into the lives of the other characters, finding each one of them at their lowest point, and saving them from a life of misery by showing them the love and friendship that's absent from every other facet of their lives, as he gives them new purpose as a member of his squad. Bruno believes in Mr. Fugo, Abaccio, and Francia. He sees the good in them where no one else did, and because of this, they have developed an intense loyalty and affection for him. And so the answer as to what binds these characters together is simple. It's each other. Well, part four yeah, is some I mean, major yeah, improvements in Rocky's ability it, to write believable, compelling yeah, characters. It's together. in part five when we see him develop the ability to convey the relationships that exist between those characters. Bruno's squad feel like a family, and that's the family that Journo is brought into after a chance encounter with Bruno. The two discover that they have a shared goal, to expose the dangerous anonymous boss of El Pasión, defeat him, and rid the organization of its drug trade once and for all setting the group on a journey of battle and espionage across Italy as they attempt to gain the favor of the boss by delivering him his estranged daughter, while also withstanding attack from all sides from the other cells of El Pasión. Where part five really starts to come into its own is where this increased focus on relationships begins to change the dynamic of the stand battles. Oh, okay. While the first half of the series consists mostly of one-on-one -on -one encounters designed to introduce us to each individual members of the squad, about halfway through, that focus shifts to multi-person stand battles. And while Jojo has Everybody dabbled in this kind of encounter before, it's never been to this extent or done this well. With our heroes now having to team up to take on teams of stand users or combine their powers to take down one hyper powerful enemy. Whose abilities can synergize to produce oh, surprising effects, nice like Journo imbuing Mista's bullets with life, giving them secondary functions after they've hit their targets. This also means that directly less powerful stands can now become feasible, like Tiziano's talking head, a stand that attaches itself to the target's tongue, causing them to say the opposite of whatever they mean to. Oh, Not a powerful ability by itself, but one that becomes very dangerous when coupled with the more directly offensive stand stands like Squallow's Clash. Talking Damn. heads allowing the pair to sow chaos among the ranks of their enemies as their communication is disrupted and they struggle to both understand and communicate how and from where they are being attacked. Squallow and Tiziano show something else about part five, and that is that the concept of relationships is not just reserved for our heroes, but is also a large part of the enemy stand users. We can tell from how Squallow and Tiziano act around each other that they are most likely romantically connected. A possible reason their stands work so well together being because of the bond that has formed between them. You can see relationships like this everywhere in part five, so, and okay, in particular so in so Risotto's so Hitman Squad, the enemy group of stand users also attempting to expose the boss. When one of their members is killed, we see the others attend his funeral, and it's a small touch, but it's also like, oh, shit, 
This isn't just a collection of isolated bad guys, but a group of people who genuinely attend his funeral. And it's a small touch, but it's also like, oh, shit. This isn't just a collection of isolated bad guys, but a group of people who genuinely care about each other the same way Bruno Squad does. With there being even more pronounced relationships that exist yeah, between each its well, individual be, members. Be, well, the implied relationship between be, Gelato and Sorbet. The weird sub-dom thing going on with Chocolato and Seco. But my personal favourite of these relationships, which also heavily contributes to one of the best fights in all of JoJo, is the fraternal bond between Prosciutto and Pesci. Prosciutto and Pesci are two enemy stand users introduced around the midpoint of part 5. And part of what makes the encounter with them so compelling is their relationship and how it changes the dynamic of the fight. Out of the two, Prosciutto is the veteran. A hardened mafioso who kills as naturally as he breathes. But Pesci, on the other hand, is the younger and less confident of the two, often unsure of what step to take next, and in the eyes of Prosciutto, lacking the resolve of a true gangster. A failing Prosciutto frequently admonishes him for. The exact nature of the relationship of the two is unclear, Pesci referring to Prosciutto as his anarchy, which could mean brother, but could also mean, like, bro. But regardless, what's important is that there is actually a warmth between them. While Prosciutto frequently grows frustrated with Dang, Pesci, he bro, still believes like in his younger anarchy. Prosciutto keen to drive the gangster he knows Pesci can become. While Prosciutto is Pesci's hero, viewing his anarchy with an older brother like awe. And that bond is reflected in their fighting style. Prosciutto using his stand the Grateful Dead to gradually age his opponents. While well, Pesci attacks though. more directly with That's his fishing cool. rods and Beach Boy, designed to keep attackers at bay, allowing Grateful Dead to slowly no eke away their life force like from a distance. Them, yeah, and these like are the MPs, tactics that allow the two to pin like down Bruno's squad aboard a speeding train. Curious. But I'm just curious. when it looks like victory is in sight, yes, disaster yes, strikes and Prosciutto is killed, leaving Pesci alone, whose despair awakens within him a new resolve. The loss of his anarchy driving Pesci to become the killer his brother always knew he could be, transforming him into a far more dangerous opponent, which both drives up the intensity of the battle's climax, but also imbues the encounter with a tangible sense of emotion. In the same way Mista and the others believe in Bruno and look up to him, Pesci believed in Prosciutto, and so his loss is a painful experience that foreshadows events to come. And it's this kind of focus on the emotions and relationships of the characters that give the battles of part 5 their heart and edge. The Battles of Part 5 are also where we can see another of the series' major strengths, and specifically yeah, yeah, I mean, I the strength like the of the, the anime adaptation. Like the this is the reason really, I felt really comfortable good. leaving Slash Reed like out of this series. video title, as the anime does so much to elevate the story of Golden like, Wings to the point that it's the first time I'd really, really recommend, recommend an anime, anime of Jojo over the manga. Although it should be noted that at this point, Araki's ability to create manga were still developing, with his best work still ahead of him. Hey, the, the anime like, is beautiful, like falling somewhere between the Iraqi faithful designs of part 3 and the stylistic, saturated pop art of part 4. David Productions doing a fantastic job of translating the complicated designs of part 5 into animated form, while retaining all the harsh line work and thick shadows that make Iraqi's art style so distinctive. Bringing to life a gorgeous depiction of sun-drenched Italy, the warm, saturated hues capturing the atmosphere and climate of that country beautiful. Beautifully. And it's not even just visual. The music is fun. Not well, as now as their own theme music, which helps music add to their individuality. Some of like these tracks even directly time. mirroring okay. that stand user's ability, like how Moody Blues Rewind is conveyed audibly through crunchy VCR distortion. That's so dope. That's all I can play here, Warner Brothers will sue me. I could talk a lot about all the little You're touches that to make Part 5's anime great. I mean, just look at the insanity happening on screen. This was taken from just four throwaway panels. But what really elevates it to me is how it leverages the strength of animation to bring new life to its battles. And in particular, the stand abilities that drive them. 
Many of the stand abilities in part 3 were quite simple to understand. A star platinum punches hard, Magician's Red shoots fire, the world stops time, and Death 13 is Freddy Krueger. Most stand abilities can be explained in just a few words, but that complexity increased in part 4, with less direct stands like Lock and Heaven's Door. And by part 5, that complexity has increased even further, with stands like Gold Experience, Notorious B.I.G., and one other that we will get to. The advantage of the anime is it's able to recreate these more nuanced abilities in motion and thus capture the subtleties of their abilities in a way that is much easier to understand than in a manga. For example, take a stand like Black Sabbath, who is vulnerable to sunlight and whose strength increases when in the shadows, meaning that the time of day, position of the sun, and how the shadows are falling are all important mechanics in understanding and appreciating this encounter, but also all aspects that are difficult to convey in the cramped pages of a monotone comic, a problem that the anime avoids utilizing color design, wide open landscape shots, and dynamic camera movement to bring the specifics of this battle to life. And the result the result is the battle with Black Sabbath comes alive in a way just kind of doesn't in the manga. There are multiple examples of this throughout part 5 where abilities and scenarios are easier to comprehend in motion than they are in panels, but none more so than King Crimson. King Crimson is a stand so strange and difficult to understand that it has long made its way into the hallowed halls of Jojo memedom. And that was at least until the anime. King Crimson's ability is to erase time. And to explain what that means and to convey how the anime and manga handle it differently, I need to first illustrate how it works without using either, so hello. Let's say King Crimson uses his ability to erase time right as I'm drinking a glass of water. If we break this action down into three segments of time, we can see that there's me raising the glass to my mouth, me drinking the water from it, and yeah, okay. me lowering the glass. And let's say it's this middle three second chunk that King Crimson so decides to raise. Like now, from my point of view, I would raise the glass to my mouth, and the next instant, the glass would be down by my side, with me retaining no memory of drinking the water, just the experience that I was about to, and then it was already done. So if we look at this happening on a timeline, okay, what's happening is that King Crimson has essentially erased this middle chunk and slid these two remaining four second chunks together, causing a skip in time that leaves me shocked, confused, and more complicated is that King bigger. Crimson also has the ability to see 10 seconds into the future, allowing him to react to his opponent's actions before they actually happen. Oh, so we can, so we can kind of like read out time a little bit. Bro. Invisible, so he's gonna be out a little bit. That's see his cool. opponent's attack, repositioning to an advantageous scenario, delete his opponent's experience of those actions happening, and then striking. As for whether this instant of a raised time actually happens, I don't know. It seems like there's two contrasting explanations in the manga, and I've watched so many videos on it, and I just don't. So let's just ignore that part and focus on both how the manga and anime depict this erasure of time. The problem with trying to show King Crimson's ability through comics is that it's asking us to accept an objective erasure of time in a medium where time is subjective. In other words, whenever we read a comic, a fundamental part of the experience is accepting that we're not just looking at a collection of static images, but a sequence of events. That in between panels, there is a flow of time connecting one action to the next. Right, I see now. Okay. But whenever King sense. Crimson is in use, we the are being asked to disregard kind of this idea and to accept <laughs> that the only movement. instances actually happening that are being experienced by our characters are the moments of time being expressly shown inside the panels. In other words, deleting the implied flow of time that is happening in between panels, which is so confusing and counterintuitive to how comics work, all while simultaneously trying to visually convey King Crimson's ability to see through time it wasn't impossible to understand, but it was very difficult, and led to a large portion of the JoJo fanbase, including myself, yeah, having crazy. no real idea how King Crimson's abilities work, leading to things like this. Alright, you wanna know? Fine, I admit it! <laughs> I don't know how King Crimson works! He oh, erases yeah. time, but what does that mean? It doesn't make any sense! You can't erase time! You can't erase time! Fine, you can freeze time and you can turn back time, but you can't erase time! That doesn't make sense! Why is King Crimson Why? Please! Please someone tell me! I need to know how King Crimson works! Ah! This is really 
not me criticizing Araki's ability to draw comics, which is a very specific area where the medium of comics is less equipped to convey a concept than a piece of animation. In animation, the problem is far simpler, because we now have an objective measure of time that parallels our own. So all we need is a simple jump cut and maybe a sound cue, and it's like, bang, we experience the That's exact skip done, in bro. time that the characters do, without do, having bro. to go through that dense layer of abstraction that the comic requires. And while still one of the more complicated stand abilities to get your head around, it's infinitely easier to understand in the anime than it originally was. The it's advantage to this Jojo's is more than just making a complicated kind of like concept anime. easier to Jojo's understand. A major difference anime. between the battles of part 4 and those of part 5 is the level of violence and intensity. For the most part, part 4 is pretty chilled, where a few notable exceptions aside, battles are the equivalent of high school scuffles, where people rarely die and many of the enemies encountered later return as allies. Okay. But this never happens in part 5. Part 5's combat feels more like violent wars to stay alive, Bruno and his squad sustaining massive life-threatening damage with each passing encounter. They lose limbs, they get shot, and they are constantly snatching each other from the brink of death. The bond between them, driving them forward and letting them survive these brutal encounters. And towards the end of the story, it really starts to feel like together, they can survive anything. And that is until King Crimson. And King Crimson is violence incarnate. King Crimson doesn't really fight, it just kills. His ability allowing him to tear and rip his opponents apart without resistance. And this is the horror of King Crimson, the insurmountable fear he King presents. Says, and because of how much weird. more digestible his ability is in the anime, that's a fear that becomes infinitely easier to understand and thus empathize with the insurmountable odds our heroes must face. Driving up the emotional stakes of the encounters with King Crimson and thus his stand user, the main antagonist of part five, Diavolo. And the beautiful thing about Diavolo is that King Crimson is only part of what makes him such a terrifying villain. Diavolo stands unchallenged at the peak of El Pasión, but unlike his subordinates and nearly every other character of Golden Wind, there's one key difference with him. He has no relationships, he has awesome. no friends or direct contact with any other human. Rather, he is in a shroud of anonymity, carrying out his commands through intermediaries, meaning no one has any idea what he looks like, where he lives, or is aware of any shred of information about him. Not his subordinates, not his daughter, and to an extent, not even himself. Diavolo existing as one of two alternate personalities trapped in the same body, one of which is a innocent young boy, the other being the psychotic tyrant who maintains control of El Pasión by harvesting fear and terror in every and particularly in anyone who would dare attempt to uncover his true identity, as did his subordinates Gelato and Sorbet, yes, with Gelato like, being yes, sliced like, into 36 individual segments, encased in glass, and sent to the other members of El Pasión as a warning, with Sorbet being made watch, choking himself to death in terror to avoid the same fate. To Diavolo, a relationship isn't a source of strength, but an open wound that must be sealed. When Bruno's squad eventually delivers delivers his daughter Trish to him, they're horrified at the revelation that he plans to kill her, and in doing so, severing his final blood link between him and the outside world, allowing him to control El Pasión from the shadows forever. Diavolo forsaking all relationships and intimacy in order to protect himself from the vulnerability that other people bring. And the frightening thing about Diavolo is... I kind of get it. Like, not the killing your kid part but the other part relationships do leave you vulnerable key. they are difficult and complicated and painful people disappoint us people leave people die 
one way or another, all relationships eventually end. And rather than leave yourself vulnerable to that pain, it can feel easier to just close yourself off and embrace isolation rather than agony. And this is the deeply human fear that Diavolo embodies, and what makes him such a frightening, relatable villain. But this is also the kind of beautiful thing about Part 5. People will hurt you. People will Yeah, a lot of backstabbing, a lot of betrayal. Will lose people that a lot of everything love. happens in Part 4. Part 4 was definitely but like brutal, bro. Maybe it was crazy. that's okay, yeah, because thing. for all the potential other all people right. have to cause us pain, they're also the only thing that really make life worth living. The ones who can pull us from the paths we're on, lift us up, and give us the chance to be better than what we are. And in the light of that, the pain is worth it. Where Diavolo turns away from that pain, Giorno and his friends embrace it, and all the sorrow and happiness that comes with it. This is what I love about part five. It's still JoJo's. It's still this insane spectacle of superpowered death battles, bananas yeah, turning into revolvers, it's, it's, and it's, it's, people okay, so shooting ghosts at each other. Still, like, so but it's like, also this it fucking take, like, beautiful story like, about still kinda relationships, has that same about that how we can one, find yeah, salvation yeah, in other people as long as we're willing to accept the pain that comes with that. Right, I think I, that's I, part five is apparently awesome. very emotional. It's, like, it's very different. Why you should watch. Jojo is bizarre different than part five. It's not like it's not like the other. Is this like part five is more serious? Hey, Magfest 2020. All right, guys. Well, that's that video. Um, hold on, give me one second, and then we'll talk about it. All right. So yeah, Joe. Like I said, Jojo is like, like I said, it's a great anime. I love Jojo. Uh, I, like I said, I'm gonna watch part five for sure. I, I, like I said, I heard part five was like really different. It's, it, it's, it's JoJo still, but it's like it's way more serious. It's way more about like relationships, teamwork. You know what I'm saying? Like, and definitely kind of like working together as a team, um, bonding, building connections. It's definitely like really different. It's it's not that same like goofy JoJo and what we used to getting. Nah, it's like pretty serious. It's like deep characters. We saw like what happened with Journo and. Um, Jern only has, like, one win, but the thing is, like, in, in, um, part five, what I'm thinking is that, like, he didn't really get enough shine. They didn't really show him enough shine in part five because, like, um, because it was only, like, the first season, because it was, like, not the first season, like, that we actually got, we got to see Jern, so that's what I'm thinking. But um, but like I said, I'm still looking forward. I, I'm still looking forward. I'm definitely gonna check it out. Uh, I haven't seen it. I have not seen it. I heard it. Like I said, I heard it like it was, it was mixed. It was mixed, mixed, mixed uh, uh, mixed type vibe. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, I definitely do. I'll put JoJo as one of the greatest anime. Like like I love like I feel like the story in the anime is definitely really good. I love the I love the characters. I love the characters. I love um. The moves, the fights, the animation. Like, I see, like, JoJo has, like, that great like, that great CGI animation. And, like, I'm not really a huge fan of CGI, but JoJo just does it, like, with, with ease. It just looks so perfect. But anyway, guys, hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Like, comment, subscribe, to the channel. It's my name, JJ, aka Maj Marcus. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, Z.